Hey, Doc, I'm here. I got the DeLorean outside all fueled up. What was it you needed? Doc. Where is he? In here. Did I set the time circuits? Ah. A note. What have we got here? Wow. The future's amazing. Oh, what did... Marty, there's no time to explain. You must make my fancy chicken recipe before I return? The space-time continuum depends on it. Your friend in time. Doc. Oh, this is heavy. Good day, time travelers, and welcome to Kitchen Caravan, the show where I take various theme park recipes and try to recreate them to the best of my ability. Right, Scott! Today, we're going to take a look at a restaurant that I didn't even know existed until a few days ago and was very excited about it. Unfortunately, it's no longer around. Good thing we have a time machine, so let's go back and take a look. At Doc Brown's Chicken, located at Universal Studios Hollywood, this actually opened up in 1999 and unfortunately closed in 2014. I didn't know this was even real. I heard jokes about it until I looked it up and did some homework. And you'll see here, it's a real place. Take a look at some of the interior. They have a lot of cool pictures of Doc all over the world. It's fantastic. Here's a look at the menu. Not a very large menu, but various types of chicken and some other special items. Now, what had me really excited about this is that I did find a recipe on a website called Pop Rewind, and if you take a look here at this recipe, this is called Doc Brown's Fancy Oven Fried Chicken. Now, I do not know if this is an official recipe from the park restaurant. I don't think it is, but either way, I'm excited to try something that is reminiscent of it, and it's got Doc Brown's Fancy Chicken in the title. I like that it's called Fancy. I mean, just take a look at Doc. He's clearly a fancy fellow. So I'm very excited to try and make this, and it looks relatively simple, and you just have to do it in an oven, and you don't need a deep fryer. All right, and here's everything we're going to need for cooking. You'll see pretty basic stuff. Now, one thing I don't have that I'm supposed to is heavy cream I'm using instead of milk. Just because I forgot to buy milk. Think with fly. <laughs> yes, you can use it and mix it with water, and hopefully that turns out okay. I find it very fitting that the peanut oil I'm using is called Hollywood. Love it. Now, one thing I am going to deviate from the recipe is it says to use chicken thighs. I'm actually going to use some chicken tenders, mainly because I'm not a fan of cooking chicken just because you have to get it just right, like fish and other meats. If you undercook it, that's fine, but not chicken. So because the um, chicken tenders are a little bit thinner, I'm hoping I'll have better luck cooking them. We're actually gonna make three bowl stations. One of them's gonna have like a panko and seasoning mix. Another's gonna have like the egg and the milk. And the other one is, I forgot. We'll have to take a look. But I happen to have these bowls that are perfect for the occasion. This is fancy chicken after all. All right, for the first bowl, we're mixing flour, salt, and pepper. That's easy, can't mess that one up. All right, first we'll put this flour in the bowl, the last of my gold medal flour. Probably won the uh, Flower Olympics. Pepper. There we go. And now we just mix it. And bowl one is complete. Just a cool little piece of trivia too, when I was looking up the Doc Brown's chicken, uh, that location at Universal Studios Hollywood has been serving chicken since 1915. Uh, it used to be some other restaurant, then it was Doc Brown's Chicken, and now it's currently Cletus's Chicken Shack. So kind of neat that they've been serving chicken there for over 100 years now. All right, we're already done with one and a three bowls. This is surprisingly easy so far. All right, in the second bowl, we're going to do egg, milk. I'm going to probably do water and add a little bit of the heavy cream. Uh, Frank's Red Hot Sauce and Salt Pepper, again. Not 100% sure the best way to do it, but I'll take a fourth of a cup. It needs a fourth of a cup of milk, and I'll fill it with mostly water, and then top it off with some heavy cream, and hopefully that substitutes itself as being milk. Ew. This looks really gross, actually. Smells so good. 
more salt, more pepper. I really like the slogan for the restaurant. It's the, uh, the finest chicken of all time, which is really funny because uh, Doc has been through all the time and he, he knows good chicken. Don't underestimate Doc Brown when it comes to chicken. I'm hoping this meets his standards. All right, two bowls down, one to go. The last one is basically gonna be all of our delicious seasoning and panko coating. One, I'll do like one and a half. Just because again, I'm doing tenders. And, uh... I'm getting ready to add the other spices and paprika, but I like what it says here in the uh, ingredients for it. It says, be sure to find the oldest container in the back of your spice cabinet with a lid that won't close. I guess it needs to be old paprika, the older the better. Isn't it funny we're making a Back to the Future food item and one of the ingredients is called thyme? It looks, it looks almost artistic, the way it's thrown about. Now we'll mix it up and then add in the peanut oil to make it all sticky. Something that I didn't really think about, but on the recipe, it doesn't say anything about sauce for the chicken. It says it recommends like fries and coleslaw and all that, but there's no sauce designated to eat with Doc Brown's fancy chicken. So I'll probably save some of the Frank's Red Hot out. Maybe try that and then I'll see what kind of barbecue sauce I have. I'm sure barbecue sauce is the intended sauce because it usually is for everything. I'll take a look at what I have and see what works. There we are, mixed thoroughly. Now we will add the peanut oil. Here's a trick my grandma showed me. Let's put the garlic salt. Well, normally garlic salt, but it probably works with the powder. Great Scott! Mm. Tastes very similar. Let's add some of that Hollywood. There we are, three of three bowls ready to go. Now we're going to take our chicken tenders, walk them through the line. We're going to coat them in that then that, then that, slap them on a pan. Gonna have to roll up the sleeves for this one. There we are. That is the messiest thing that I've ever done, but they actually look kinda like chicken tender shit. All right, so I'm gonna put them in the oven. It says to do it for 45 minutes, but since they're chicken tenders, I'll probably do it for 20, 25, see how it looks. But then again, it tells you specifically, chicken should be fancy, brown, and crispy when done. Well, it's already fancy, so we're looking for brown and crispy. Somehow, I don't have any regular barbecue sauce. They're all like crazy flavored things. So we'll try two of the flavored ones. We got the Hawaiian, which has pineapple on the left. We've got the boysenberry on the right. And then the Frank's red hot in the middle. We'll try it plain, we'll try it with each of these and see what it's like. All right, oven's ready. Let's get the chicken in there. They slide around a little bit. There we go. And there we are. That should be done enough. It is sizzling. Actually looks quite good. And as the recipe said, they've gotta be fancy and golden brown. There we are, a blast from the past. I'm just gonna start with this for now. I did pull out the fancy plate though because this is fancy chicken. All right, here we go. I'm very excited because anything back to the future is the best. I've never made chicken before. I hope I cooked it all the way through. I'm noticing like on the bottom, I got the small one because it looked more cooked. It's pretty brown, but the top, I don't know. Try a bite regular, see how it is. Pretty good, but I think it definitely would need some sauce. First thing I'm noticing, this is actually really messy. Alright, we'll try the uh... we'll try the Hawaiian pineapple barbecue sauce first. Definitely makes it taste a bit better. We'll try some of that boysenberry sauce from the Knott's Berry Farm. I think I like that one a little bit better. Lastly, get some more of that Frank's Red Hot. I can't really taste any spice in the chicken itself. I felt like I put a lot in there when I was making it. But I'm not tasting it right now. The Frank's Red Hot is definitely the best option here. 
out of these three. I'm sure regular barbecue sauce would be really good too. Um, this chicken was really easy to make. It's pretty good. One thing I went back and looked at is I didn't, I don't think I pushed enough panko breadcrumbs on. And I think I probably could have cooked it a little longer. The rest of them will probably end up cooking longer when I cook them again, just to make it extra crispy. Overall, I'm really happy with this one. Would I make this again? Probably, if I was craving some fresh fried chicken. I wanted to make it at home, I don't have a fryer. As far as oven baked chicken goes, this is my favorite. So yeah, definitely a good option. All right, that is gonna do it for today. Thank you all for watching and... Hey, Doc, you're back. Marty, have you created the chicken? Well, yeah, but... Well, where is it? Great Scott! Marty, don't you realize what you've done? The space-time continuum damage is irreversible. Who knows what could happen? I didn't say anything about not eating the chicken. Besides, what's the worst that could happen?